notes and I'll start the live transcript. So hi everybody and welcome to the June 6th Chaos DEI. July, July 6th. July 6th Chaos DEI working group meeting and welcome back from our small break over the course of two weeks. So the minutes should be in the chat. If you could add yourself, that would be wonderful. I will share my screen. Um, so I'm going to facilitate uh, today because we didn't really assign one last time. Um, would anybody like to facilitate next time? Again, it's always kind of <laughs> a Dalmatian. Um, would anybody like to facilitate next time? Again, it's always kind of by committee, but any volunteers for that? Uh, next week is, I'm trying to think of where I will be next Wednesday. I'm, I'm going to, I'm actually, uh, I, I can, I, I'll be in, I'll be between, let's see, I'm traveling. I'm not sure I can do it on okay. Wednesday. I'm not positive. So, because I'll be either in Michigan or Wisconsin. Right. Okay. Any other people, maybe? Okay, Rose wants as well. It's you can awesome. do it, Christy. I can. I, I will be happy to help with the agenda too. Thank you, Christy. Okay, um, great. So, a couple things um, that I'd like to get through today. It's a fairly light agenda. Um, one of the ones that I would like to take just a second to take a look at if we could do this as a group is as part of the project badging uh, initiative, we're going to be asking projects to talk about how they address, at least this is where we're at the moment, address these four particular metrics. So the newcomer experience, recognizing contributors, project burnout and inclusive leadership. Um, the, the bottom three we actually have as metrics. The top one we don't have as a metric. So we do need to develop this as a metric uh, as part of the DEI working group so that we can include it in the badging, in the project badging uh, initiative. So if you could I'd like to take just a few minutes and get a little bit of feedback on newcomer experience, if that's all right with everybody. So if you could just kind of click and follow the link for newcomer experience. So we have some pretty light text in here, which is just some of this is, is template language. And some of it, I can get rid of some of this. And some of it is um, existing or like definitional language. So we need things like a question. So like what, what is the question associated with newcomer experience? Like how welcoming is an open source community to newcomers or something like along those lines? We have a description, we have some objectives. What we don't have uh, really down here is with respect to the implementation, how you might go about implementing such a metric. So it could be things like surveys. So if we could all just take a, a maybe 10 minutes and work on this document, I'll actually stop the recording for a little while and I'll just get your feedback. This usually seems to work uh, pretty well. All right, so I'm going to stop my share. I'm going to pause the recording. And you know, give it just, you know, 10 minutes. That would be super cool. Right. Quick question. Are we including... So it's newcomer experience, so it's the onboarding and stuff. Mm -hmm. But are we also including kind of the retention? Like, did they make it to a second patch type of thing? I think that seems, yeah, I think that seems like a very reasonable thing to include. You just muted, so I'm guessing <laughs> you're all right with that inclusion. Yeah, no. Okay. Yeah, I think that seems I think that seems like a good idea. So thanks for that, Amy. Back. 
look at it. Hi, welcome back, everybody. Share my screen. Um, so for the last 10 or 15 minutes, we were working on the newcomer experience. So thanks um, for everybody for providing some thoughts on this. Um, whatever, to edit the document a bit more. Okay. So thank you for that. Um, any other comments on newcomer experience that you think we should capture that aren't in the document? All right, all good. Um, I did, I know that in the uh, project badging meeting that we had just prior to this, we were talking about, or the DEI badging meeting, we were talking about project badging. Um, and a couple things had come up. So um, maybe give me just a second here. Well, I'll just express it here. So one, there's been a suggestion, it was brought forward by Sean in the community call yesterday about the potential of having two levels of badging. One is, is an automated kind of bot level. Mm -hmm. And then the other is a human, human reviewed. So the, and the idea uh, came up in a discussion I had with Demetrius Cheatham at OSS Summit North America, where she was thinking of how could GitHub promote this uh, and make the idea of having a statement on DEI part of a repository. And what GitHub's done in the past is they've given you a credit or made it a criteria for making your repository visible or maybe a very simple entry, what I'd call an entry level badge. If they had the DEI.md file with the headings that we specify in it, and, and that way that you could you'd be able to draw a lot of people into it because they would get something, it would let GitHub do like an initial scan to see projects that are interested in, and that could be used to promote um, wider participation in the next level badge which we would which would actually involve human review and provide uh, i think a higher level of recognition um, so really the the idea is uh publicity and to um make make the kickoff something that could occur with a lot of attention which is the same as publicity, I guess. Um, okay, so we did talk about this in the prior meeting. We have no con no conclusion, so it's it's really just for additional people on this call to think about. Um, so, so one was that we'd have this automated. I don't know if you can see that. How well you can see that, but I'll make it a little bigger. That we have the automated or bot level badging that we would call pending at this point. So one concern, Sean, and what you described yeah. that came up was that if if we provide a DEI template, a mm -hmm. DEI.md template, mm -hmm. and then only search for the headers, it's pretty easy for a project just to put a blank DEI.md file. I think the I think we could search for both headers and something underneath the headers. That's yeah. that's not hard. What no. about file size? Yeah. yeah, that could that could also be a criteria. Um I've definitely done that before to make sure that files were getting written to. <laughs> There's actually more than <laughs> the one KB of um uh, it also came up about possibly having check boxes that projects have to to do and we can like things that like check boxes kind of like what we have in oh our yeah process anyway and you have to humanly yeah. check them like i have done this <laughs> i have done that you know yeah. what I, mean? I mean i i i don't see why github couldn't scan for that the same as they could scan for anything else that's not even machine learning it's just looking for a checkbox in a formatted file 
So some sort of um... yeah, I think the the you know the general idea I think is something there was some um, people were excited about it, but they had these concerns, and so I think those are details that would have to be we'll have to work those out with GitHub. Of course. Um, so hmm. um, an, another one that came out is is how do we ensure that a project that goes through, say, the automated process, and Katie, you can tell me if I'm getting this right, but a project that goes through the automated process and they get a badge, they're yeah. like, I, I got one. And then we're like, yeah. you can get a better badge if you do a human review. Like, what's right. the incentive to do that second, the yeah. second one? Um, they already we, have a shiny sticker. Why do they we, want a different shiny sticker? Um, we, I, so the one thing, so that's my experience with GitHub is, for example, when when I put a, a code of conduct file and um, a contributing file into my um, my project, those were crit those were criteria for having my project appear near the top of search lists on github so there in those cases there was not a badge there was it was just a criteria for having your project show up and so the motivation was not actually a badge um, in that case and so we could make and github's done that before i know they've done that before um, it's like a project health checklist and if we said let's add it to the project health checklist that would motivate people to do it and then we and wouldn't the get, we, we could uh, no well we wouldn't they wouldn't need to they wouldn't get the badge but if they did a good job and they already put the file in there with some content i think that would encourage people to go for the actual badge as well my biggest concern about all of this and we don't have it on that list yet but we did talk about it was this sounds like a github badge now it doesn't how is somebody on gitlab we have lots of big companies corporations and larger projects that put things on github we have a lot and we have another ton of independent ones and smaller projects or just other projects on gitlab but they're doing the same they're going to put forward the same effort and how do they get involved with this? They can't click that same get a badge off of GitHub unless they move their project to GitHub. Although they, I, I don't see any reason that the badging couldn't exist on both platforms. I think what I think we need to have, because Ray doesn't work at GitLab anymore, right? He works somewhere else. Nuri, who? Yeah, Ray Paik. Mm. No, he hasn't worked there for a while. Yeah, that's what I thought. Or so. Norizzi. Um, but we, I, I think uh, um, Demetrius has connections at GitLab, and so we could ask to try to do this across both GitLab and GitHub. And I, I think my experience talking to Demetrius is she's 100% for that, that she's not, she doesn't want DEI to be a GitHub thing. <laughs> kind, of, kind of seems like the opposite of what DEI would be about. How do you? people on other platforms if there's another repository they're using how do they get it then if it's uh, not once, because like getting a um a cii badge they have to go to a different website to get it it's not like in place or any other badge yeah it's yeah if because if github or gitlab gets it done first it's gonna feel like the next one is more of an afterthought if it takes them a while to get it implemented and it's on one platform before the other and people don't have the ability to apply for it. Yeah. I, so I can take I could take it to do to coordinate with uh, GitHub and GitLab and see if we can make this a, a uniform uh, release thing. I know we did the we did uh, D, uh, we've done some DEI work in collaboration like in parallel with GitHub and GitLab working closely together. The other platform that is that has a lot of mind share, of course, is um, I can't remember the name of it now. Um, there's one there's one other major okay. one. 
Bitbucket. Bitbucket, thank you. Um, and then after Bitbucket, it's like the other ones that the only other, I guess there's a few others, but Garrett is the only one that I've seen used and Garrett functions really differently than those other three platforms. And I've only seen Garrett on, frankly, old Linux Foundation projects. Hey! Hey! Oh, sorry. Hey! <laughs> Hey, <laughs> sorry. Don't mess with my Garrett. I'm not. I'm not dissing Garrett. I'm, I'm Garrett saying really I, is the review system. Um, like Open Infra, we have our own repositories that do eventually get mirrored to GitHub, Garrett, but GitHub yeah. is not our source of truth. Right. But Garrett's really the review system. Yeah, and it's and I I didn't mean to diss Garrett. It has it's I a love different Garrett. It's a different, it's just a, it's a different kind of review system and easier, uh, easier. Yeah, it, it's weird. I think it is easier once you, once and, you get and, configured and set up, it's a pain yeah. in the ass to set up, but it is so much easier than pull requests. Yeah, I would, I, would, I agree. I've, I've seen it in action being much, much more efficient. So I, I meant no disrespect to Garrett, <laughs> um, but I, Garrett, Garrett also functions a little bit less like a project page kind of as the center. So there's, I don't know, does, is there any, are there badges on Garrett? I haven't spent that much time on it. I don't think so. I mean, we have our own installation of it. Um, yeah. So I don't even think of it as being a repository, but only as the review system. Yeah. That, and that, that's my, and my other experience with Garrett is that every organization is on a slightly different version and the APIs are slightly different. So there are so let, let's, challenges. Yeah, let's get back to- Okay, get back on point so, is what you yeah. suggesting. How, how do we not exclude people on Gitbucket and other things? I, I, think, I think so, GitLab, GitHub, Bitbucket, those are three specific ones that have a substantial port like I don't know what the percentage is, but I would guess it's well over 90% of all open source. Um, so if we lined, if we made it available to, if we may, if we work with each of those platforms on this idea, then I think um, I, then that would be the right, I suppose that would be the right way to do it. We, um, and then, and I suppose the point is really, it once we go through the reviewed badging system, it really, it doesn't matter what platform you're on, you can get a badge on whatever platform by going through this process. It's that automated step of some kind of low level, you know, initial recognition that would be a platform thing that would need to be worked out, I think is what I'm hearing. Yeah, that just there's certain level of that, even if you say, oh, but over 90% of that, it's accessible to that first part is accessible to over 90%. But if we were to ever say that about an event badge and an event and say, oh, but um, the event is accessible to over 90% of people in this demographic because there's only this minority of people that don't have access to this. That's yeah. a pretty good size statistic that we're looking at. And we would say there, that's not a good DEI metric in, for an event badge. Yeah. Oh, I, we're not that like access to internet or something. Oh, well, you can't manage it for ten percent. Well, sure, you still get the badge, kind of. I don't. Yeah, it, I, it feels exclusionary. I yeah. I, I'm. What I'm trying to so if um. Where would he? Would automation so that, maybe be down the road a little bit when we can get more of a group of people together? Well, what are the cases that you're thinking of that are off of the the three or four major platforms? I, I think I'm not the outside of I know some universities maintain their own GitLab or GitHub enterprise things. Yeah, there are there are a bunch that are like GitLab enterprise or GitLab community that are put up. But um, so if so that we just want, I just want to make sure that if there's a smaller project out there that wants to get involved with this and they're on something else, they still have the ability to, and that we don't put roadblocks in front of them. Okay. Because we have event badging and it does is not platform specific. So I mean, maybe in those cases, Katie, 
like if there's a project that's on a different platform and i mean maybe we would just provide a human check okay. at that point that they have you know what i mean but they even just have this pending part done have a um mm -hmm. some sort of a yeah on the website that says if you are on a different platform we welcome you to submit it this way yeah exactly just let us know and we'll just confirm that you have this document in there what about a small piece of um chaos software that um just had an api where you would you know point your repository url to it wherever that is it would look for the pieces and the content under the dei badge and give you that initial badge that would cover all the people who aren't on a major platform that makes sense then it's also more chaos branded and it makes people go to chaos and it doesn't feel like they're just pressing a button and we're going to lose ownership if people start getting that initial thing and it makes it super easy to do it through that platform they're going to think of it as the dei badge that we can get from github or the pending badge we can get from github it might be called the chaos badge but it's still we're going to lose ownership from it unless people go to the website to have to get it this is a good conversation too, because if we do run it, if we propose to run it via chaos, that also does help a little bit, I think, in terms of our own management of the pending badge, not even just the recognition that you point out, Katie, but ensuring that it runs at GitHub and GitLab and Bitbucket. I, and I, so I think, you know, kind of the way I would imagine it working is that I'm imagining that each platform is not going to want to call some external service to badge the repos because they won't want to deal with the external integration. But I, I think maybe they could allow it. Um, and I think that having the API would cover everybody. Um, I'm skeptical that that um, that chaos would that that, uh, that the platforms would uh, use an API that we developed. However, it, maybe the way to pose the question is if we develop this API so that it's platform agnostic as an open source project, as an open source project, and that you know, GitHub and GitLab, yeah, yeah, GitHub GitLab could host it. Um, it ma it makes the the policy and sorting through bureaucracy is a little bit more time consuming but i think it it addresses I, I what i think is a very real concern that katie has because i i am i certainly know there are lots of academics and um, other folks who do not want to use a platform for whatever reason um, uh, giving uh, um like making it the process automated through each of those is going to make our annual um, like review and freeze cycles if we update metrics a lot more difficult. If we have control over what our bot or our is searching for and like evaluating, it's only yeah. one thing to change. Otherwise, we have to change it on four platforms. So yeah, I think the I think the initial badge. So I, I think we would have to. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. There would need to be, I think there's an assumption in my head as we talked about this, that the headings and the expected content under the headings or the check boxes would remain fairly stable. Uh, and that, yeah, that that would, that part would remain fairly stable and, and not change constantly. Um, and by constantly, I mean, like every couple of years, it, it, it may make sense to update, but um, but if we think we're going to add and tweak it more often than that, um, maybe so that leads me to thinking if that's if that's the way we want to try to approach it, it from a technical point of view, it's easier to think about piloting it with a single platform and and just seeing what happens 
before we, but that's not inclusive, but the technical, technically piloting it with one platform and anybody else who wants to hit our API, that's, that makes it an easier piece of software to change in the early days if we think that it will need to, if we think we're likely to want to tweak it in the first year, um, which I can't predict, obviously. We update our event badging annually with new metrics or tweaking mm -hmm. the metrics to make sure that what we're evaluating and things stay current. So I can't, Yeah. I would see project badging being similar. We're going to end up having, as we learn, as we grow, things will get modified and changed to stay relevant. Mm -hmm. So it that's why my thought is like, having them put a link to their repository in a form that we manage and having us having a way that um, a bot that can do like scan the repository and award and a badge and most of those like GitLab I know uses some sort of a badging backpack where they can import the badge themselves okay they have it like yeah, you say, I want to add a badge to my project on GitLab and you just go in and you add it. I think I'm guessing most of them probably have something like that. Yeah, so can we, adding something to my readme. Can we continue this in this badging channel on this is a very good conversation. Yeah. Few, just a few more things that I think I want to just talk about in the meeting today. So I think this is really good. So Katie, thank you for bringing up those. And yeah. Thanks for thinking through. No, Katie's brought up a lot of really good points that I hadn't considered. So okay, I have to put. I needed some minutes to put my thinking. Yeah, on that's kind of how we left the badging meeting. Like, <laughs> nothing to be resolved today, but certainly like things to think about as we continue to meet. So thank you, everybody. Um, Ruth, did you want to talk about your burnout session, the maintainer burnout session? Yeah, sure. Um, the before the break, we had our maintainer session that went really well, and we had up to I think up to fifteen participants from like different projects that shared their experience, you know, as maintainers and burnout. I think I didn't put the link to the doc there. Sorry. I can go I'll get it. I'll get it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So we we did take notes. Um, during the um, session and the attendees were like we told them we we're going to take notes and there was no recording but we from the notes we got a lot of um we got a lot of feedback that i think would um really help our burnout metric as well i think that was one of the reasons we kind of put out put out that session too you know and I think there was a particular part where we asked um, where our attendees kind of like shared how we could, how uh, maintainers could mitigate burnout within themselves and even in the community. And uh, this, the notes were taken by Sophia. Uh, Sophia did a really good job with the notes, very detailed. So I think maybe, I think we don't have that much time, but maybe in the next meeting, we could see how we could incorporate some of this feedback into um, our burnout metric. And I think too, Ruth, I was thinking about this because you had, when you brought it up yesterday in the community call, should should we go ahead and make a blog post for this? Makes a lot of sense for me. And then have, we could have it tweeted out. Yeah, we can as well make a blog post. Um, we'll first have to send this notes and, you know, inform the attendees as well that yeah. if they are okay with that too make a blog post and we would keep everything anonymous. Yep. And we share mm -hmm. and also share the blog post with uh, them as well before we push it out. Yeah, maybe we could, I would maybe let's do the second one, like actually do the blog post. Mm -hmm. Say, here's what we took away from the session. <laughs> Please let oh, us yeah. know if you want us to change anything. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a really good idea. So, um, do you, maybe you, uh, I could start it. You know what I mean? The post, yeah, we could collaborate could on it. You. Yeah, we could do collaborate we, on it. Yeah, do, do you have the contact information? Yeah, it's all the on people? the, we have yeah, it. it's all on 
the email yeah the whole emails are there so. okay so you you have everything okay cool okay great well let's um let's do that then okay great thanks ruth um sure. And then Ruth, while I'm typing, do you have any Chaos Africa updates that you want to? I think about? I am, I mentioned it yesterday during the meeting, but um, to kind of like round up on it is, we had a discussion earlier this week uh, on the second meeting, so where we kind of like um, shared our perspective on challenges that African um, open source contributors face. There was like kind of like a list. Um, and we decided to start on with uh, the challenge about poor onboarding experience, um, which a lot of persons could relate to. So moving forward, we want to kind of like take a survey, you know, ask uh, African open source contributors about their experience, onboarding experience when they join organizations and kind of like get their feedback so we know how to make it better um, so we are kind of like working on that uh so we follow up in the next meetings but yeah we are we are on it excellent okay great actually too if you if you get notes on that ruth and you think some of them might fit with what we were doing earlier about the newcomers? Yeah, sure. I, I think it intersects with it somehow. Yeah, that would be cool. That'd yeah, be really sure. Great. Um, okay, cool. And then we're out of time, but I just wanted to say this last thing. Last night in our metrics model meeting, um, DEI event badging is now a defined metrics model. So that's, that's pretty nice. So the work that we have with all those metrics together um, is is now an official metrics model. It hasn't been released yet, but it at least has made its way through that working group. So that's cool. All right. All right. Everybody, we're at the end of time. I'd like to thank you for coming and uh, we'll see you tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, whenever yeah, it might be next time. Whenever the next time we happen to have a meeting, yeah, we'll see you. I really appreciate all your time and effort. So thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you all. And thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.